Come on, let's break through right now. You are worthy of it all. Come on, church, press on through. You're worthy of it all. From you are all things. To you, Lord. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just one more time. We're so close to, to what God wants to administer to us today. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. it all, Lord, worthy of it all, you are all things, all things, you deserve the glory, hallelujah, just raise your hands right now, Heavenly Father, Lord, we welcome you, Lord, just to have your way, Lord, in our services. Lord, minister to every need that's in this building, God, those that are watching, those that will watch this this week, God. Lord, every need, Lord, we're asking, God, for your divine hand to move, Lord, God. We're asking, God, 
for divine miracles to take place. You are the miracle worker. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all of our praise to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Something good is going to happen. I just feel the presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just keep worshiping if you don't care. I'm just I'm gonna get put my stand out here a little bit early today. I was in prayer this week, not just for our church, but for the community, for our county and the surrounding counties, because I truly believe God's about to break something, a move of God like we've never seen. And I was thinking about, as I was praying, I was thanking God for the moves that are taking place, you know, like in, in Nashville and places in Alabama and Mobile and not Brother Mario and California and around and it excites me. I said, God, we we want that move. I said, God, we want to be a part of this. And I asked the Lord, I said, what should I do, God? If I'm not doing something, tell me. If I am doing something, I should let, let me know. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell in this place. And, and the Lord began to speak to me. And he, he gave me a message for this morning, and he showed me how to preach it, how to, how to do it. Normally, he just gives me a word, and we just follow tradition. And, I, and, and the Lord said, do it my way, and I'll do great things. And I thought to myself, I said, God, when God first gives you something, you're excited, I'll do it, you know. You know, when God tells you something, especially if it's a little different, you just... I'll do it. But then as the week goes on, and as the days go on, it gets closer, tradition comes up. Come on now. And so this morning, I said, God, I don't know. I said, I don't know if I can do it the way you want me to. And about that time, nobody, I had not told one person this, not one soul. I hadn't even told Sister Becky, just prayed. I sat at my desk praying this morning, and and uh, Becky says, let me read you a, a text that we just got from uh, one of the prophets in the church. And I said, okay, read it to me. And the, the text says, and, and I, I'll not say it word for word, but the text says, do what God told you to do, and do not fear, and I will move. <laughs> you see... And so we're going to do things. Can we do this? Do things different today. So I, we're going to see. I, I'm telling you, you're about to see some miracles take place. And and we're a mir you know we have seen so many miracles in the house of the Lord. God has blessed us to see. I, I believe that we have more miracles. This is pastors that believe. I believe we have more miracles in this little church than any church in the United States. We have seen them come back from the dead. We've seen ten, there's nothing that we haven't seen in this little church. God is mighty. And and, the, and I said, God, what's going to take to bring this move of God? Because I'm telling you, we can't put it off and put it off. And here's the word that God gave me. And so we're going to we're going to preach a little bit. We're going to sing and we're going to minister to you. The Lord gave me one word the other day, and He said, issues, issues. And I said, God, I, I knew. I heard a great message one time by John Kilpatrick on an issue. And I thought, Lord, what are you talking about? He says, there's too many issues in my people for me to move. He said, there's just too many issues. And he says, today, God has set this as the beginning of a new season, of a new air, that issues are going to be gone. Come on now. 
And, and so he began to, to give me some scripture. And, and so we're going to worship a little bit. We're going we're gonna to teach a little bit or minister, ever how you want to say it. But we're going to do it different today. And if, if, here's what I'm going to tell you. When God is speaking to you about an issue that you might have and you want to set free of it, you come right then. You do not wait to the end of the altar service. We may not even have, I don't even know if we'll have an altar service. It may be, but you come right then. Because this is a different service. Amen. And so the scripture that the Lord led me to was Galatians. And this, I actually had them to put this in their bulletin this morning. Galatians uh, 5 and uh, 7 says this. You did run well. But who hinders you that you should not obey the truth? And in the very next verse, next chapter, Paul told the church the same same people this. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if we faint not. We're in due season. Somebody say due season. So I said, God, I, I begin to say, Lord, what is the major issue that, what, we all have different ones. I said, "What do I? Where do I start on this?" And the Holy Spirit said, "This is where." He said, "You." He said, "The church is the bride of Christ. The church. If you're a child of God today, you're the bride of Christ." And so this is what He began to show me. He says, "I want you to think back to the first time you got when you first got saved. Was you not in love with Jesus? Come on. You couldn't get enough of Jesus." Come on now, you couldn't read your Bible enough, you couldn't, I don't know about nobody else, but I remember when I got saved, I attended a church service every single day, or every, you know, every evening, I was in church seven days a week, and would go twice as much if I had the time, and, and so, and, and then I began to think about, how many remembers, it, now some of the young people, you may be going through it now, but. How many remembers when you first started dating your spouse? Come on now. We ain't that old. I tell you, I, now I dated long distance, so Becky and I was 750 miles apart, so it was a little different with Paul. But most people, when you go out to dinner or something, you drop them off, and you can't wait to get home to call them back. And you talk half the night with them. I had some humongous phone bills. No. I mean, I had some, it, I was half my paycheck was going to pay the phone bill. Because I was in love. And I wanted to hear. And when, when you go out to eat, I don't care what you like or what you don't like. You want to eat what the one next to you eats. Uh -huh. Come on now. That's because you're in love. I don't care what your favorite movie is or what kind of movie. You're what, you'll sit there and watch a movie you don't even like because it's their movie. <laughs> because you're in love. It doesn't matter what their song is, it's your song. Well, I'd never, and I'm telling on myself, I'd never heard a worldly song in my life. I'm not a music person. I'd never heard a worldly song, hardly ever, I'll put it that way. I didn't know no worldly songs. I probably knew a few off the Grand Ole Opry or something. You know, there's a tear in your beer or something like that. <laughs> we were raised country. <laughs> but I didn't know nothing. But when I can remember the first time Sister and Becky and I went somewhere we turned the radio on, and there was a song. I don't even know who it's by, but it says, "You're once, you're twice, you're three times a lady." Come on now! I had a song. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Come on! Am I the only one that's ever went through this? Luke, look, you're looking forward to it. Get ready. <laughs> and, and so we we were in love. same way but then you've been married 
20, 30, 45 years or whatever, 43 years, issues come in. Issues come in. And we allow issues in their life, and a lot of people, it let issues come in their life that they can't even stay married no more. And, and this is what the Lord told me. He said, there's issues with my people. You once loved the Lord, and you still love the Lord, but you don't talk to God very much. You once couldn't. It didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter what the song was. You just worship God. Now, if the church sings the wrong song, you pout like a wet hen. Come on, it's true. Woo! Yep. We've yep. got some issues. Got some issues. Let me tell you something. Mark 5, 25, the woman, this is what it says. The, there was a woman that had an issue uh-huh. of blood. That's right. She had an issue, and that's, why, that's where I'm coming from. She had an issue. I'll get into this. But I'm telling you. The first thing we got to do is we got to get rid of our issue why that we're not in love with God no more. Oh, we still love Him, but we're not in, in the, how you say it? In, intimacy? Intimacy. Intimacy. I can't say that word. We're not intimate with God. That's right. he, we, we have a long distance. Come on now. True. Long distance relationships are hard. And here's the thing about issues. In Mark 5, 26, it says this. The woman went everywhere, and everybody gave her advice, but nothing worked. Right. You see, you've tried to fix your own issues, and it don't work. Yeah. Everybody in your life tried to fix your issues, and they ain't work. That's right. uh-huh. And here's the thing I want you to listen to. The Bible said... They grew worse. Mark 5, 20, they, This is what happens with issues. They, they may not be bad, but they don't get better. How many is ready to see God move in Claiborne County? How many here needs miracles in your life? You know what we're going to do right now? If God's speaking to you and you are not where you, you, you look back and you're not the same person you was when you first got saved with God, or if you're not having the relationship you should with God, that you're not there, now's the time. Not not five minutes from now, not an hour from now, not next week. Now's the time to say, God, I've got an issue. Man, I feel an anointing. Glory to God. I'll be the first to say I have issues. I've had to battle through some issues. Do you think it's easy to pastor a church when, when half the congregation don't show up? You don't think I get issues on that? Come on now. Sure I do. I say, God, what's wrong with me? What have I done? What's this? You have all kinds of issues. Issues don't do nothing but make it worse. I'm going to tell you something. I don't pastor the House of God Worship Center to please you. I pastor it to please God. Glory to God, I feel an anointing in the house of the Lord. I say if you got some issues and you're not where you need to be with God, stand to your feet. God's got a delivering power right now. It's not a magic. All it is, the woman with the issue of blood touched the Lord. Get ready right now. In it right now, I feel man, there's such a delivering power. I hope those that watch us can feel this because there, there's people that's watching this. You got issues, we're going to deal with the others here, then we're going to deal with some victory. But I'm going to obey God if you want that renewing kindle love to come back. Tell you something, it's not a denomination that you're right above your door. Now I'm gonna mess with you. Quit trying to say it's your action. 
You say, well, you might say, well, I go to church, I do this, so I'm close to God. No, I'm talking about relationship. Relationship is when my when Becky and I was 750 miles apart, she was still the apple of my eye. She she was still the she was still mine. Relationship. Sometimes when you go through serving God, you go through dry spells, but you got a relationship with God. It doesn't affect you because you got rid of some issues. I want I want everybody that believes in prayer and divine move of God. I want you to raise your hands right now. Everyone that's standing, I want you to say, Lord, I need some help. I need all the issues that have hindered me from running well out of my life right now. Glory to God. Every demonic spirit that comes against the move of God in your life, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give me a course or something before we sit down. I, we got to have a course. We got to worship in this. The, the trouble is when God does something for us, we don't worship. We're going to worship right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to say, God, I'll not be the same. I'm going to be a new person right now. Hallelujah. There's a praise that breaks the silence, a sound that slays the giant, a voice that breaks down every, every prison door. When we lift up our voices and praises go before us, for we know the battle is the Lord. I'm going to sing. Like the battle is over, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna dance like the war is won. Every prison door swings open wide. The king is overcome, and I'm gonna sing like the battle is over. I'm gonna dance like the war is won. Every prison door swings open wide. The king is overcome. There's a praise that breaks the silence. Come on. Hallelujah. A church that Come on. Come on. Giants. A voice that breaks down every Free. prison door. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. When we lift up our voices and praises go. Come on, press in, press in. For we know the battle is the Lord. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing like the wind come on, is come over. On. I'm gonna dance like the war is won. Every prison door swing open wide. The king is overcome. But I'm gonna sing like the battle is over. I'm gonna dance like the war is won. Every prison door open wide. The king is overcome. There's a praise that breaks the silence. Hallelujah. A sound that slays the giant. A voice that breaks down. And come on. Break down the door. Break down the door. Break down the door. When we lift up our voices, praises, praises go before us. For we know, for we know the battle. Is the Lord. Lord sing, sing, sing? I'm gonna sing like the battle is over. I'm gonna dance like the war. Every prison door swing open wide. The king is overcome. Every prison door. Be loose right now. Woo! Sing, sing. I'm going to sing. sing like the battle is over. I'm going to dance. Every prison door, I loose you now. In Jesus' name. I'm going to sing like the battle is over. I'm going to dance like the 
Every prison door swings open. The king is overcome. That's the Holy Ghost Church. That's the Holy Spirit. I'm going to dance. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. The king is overcome. Sing like the battle is over. The battle is over. I'm going to dance. Prison door be open. Open wide. The king is overcome. I'm going to see. Come on, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Battle 
is over. I'm going to dance like the war is done. Every broken door swing open wide. The battle is over. I'm going to dance like the war is won. Every prison door swing open wide. The king is overcome. I'm going to sing like the battle is over. I'm going to dance like the war is won. Every prison door swing open wide. The king is overcome. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance like the war is won. Every prison door swing open wide. The king is overcome. I'm going to sing like the battle is over. I'm going to dance like the war is won. Every prison door swing open wide. Just keep, just keep worshiping the Lord. Now I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you the next one the Lord told me about. And this is a, this one, this one here is. I see now why God put them in this order. The next issue the Lord told me to, to mention this morning is. It's the issue of fear, confusion, depression. In other words, issues of the mind. Issues of the mind. And you may say, but Pastor, we can have, you see, there's a difference in being concerned and having fear. You know, like the hurricane, we had concern about family members. That, that's not fear, that's concern, that leads you to prayer. But there's some people that operate in fear, and, and they can't do it. What fear does what confusion does is it takes in the, the it's in your mind but it controls every spiritual thing about you it destroys your spiritual and here's what happens fear even though you believe the word of god you'll not trust the word of god that's what fear leads to doubt is you'll believe the Bible and you know it's real, but you always think it's for someone else and not you. There's a doubt. This, these are these are issues of the mind. Depression means you have no joy, and when you have no joy, you lose hope. I've never seen such a hopeless generation as we have right now. I have never seen such a hopeless generation as we have right now, and it all stems from depression because they have no hope. They have no joy. And here's what happens is when you lose your joy, and you tell me, this God told me to say it, so I know it's right. I'm just going to say it. Then you fill in the joy. Dare I, dare I say it, Lord? We use doctor's prescription to fill in the joy, make us feel good. And it's a temporary that leads to a spiritual downfall. Now, you say, Pastor, you don't believe in medicine. Yes, I do. I'm telling you, you go to any doctor, and used to it was common knowledge, doctor gives some people just sugar pills. Because in their mind, in their mind, it makes them feel good. I heard, I read an article not too long ago, doctors, uh, they done a poll, and doctors said a lot of times they don't want to give people medicine, but if they don't give them medicine, they won't feel like, they won't, it, it, they won't, they feel like they've been cheated. So we have, a, we have a false peace. And then, we don't like to hear this, but guess where the enemy likes to play around us? That's his playground. That's the only place, be, Dave Wilkins used to say, the only place the enemy can attack you is between your ears. The only place he can attack you is between your ears. Because that's where it all stems from. So, when the enemy sees a weakness, guess where he's going to hit you at? He ain't going to attack your strong parts. He hits you in your weakness. And so here, here's what I'm, I'm about to tell you is we have issues that affect us 
and then it makes us live into a gray area. Now, you tell me if I ain't hitting this on the nail head. I know where it is. God gave it to me. But in a gray area, there's neither right or wrong. It's gray. And, and so now we're in a, America's in a gray area where everything's right, nothing's wrong. It's a gray area. But we know better than that. But because we have issues, we won't deal with it. I don't, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Hurt, leading somebody right is not hurting their feelings. So here's what's going to happen right now. If you've been under an attack of the enemy or you've allowed yourself, sometimes it's you just allow yourself. And you've been fighting mental battles of confusion, depression, doubt, unbelief, fear. That's not fighting. The same God that can heal cancer can heal the mind. Same God. Church, when you give me, I, I'll, I'll tell you what Rex Humbach said. I love this. When I read this many years ago, back in the 70s. If you don't know Rex Humbach, he, he's been gone a long time, but he was probably the largest, at one time he was the largest Pentecostal movement in America. He, he done all the groundwork for TV. Every Pentecostal preacher you see on TV can go back to Rex Humbach. He broke the ground. Rex Humbart had $25 in his pocket and a get car on his back, and he went to Akron, Ohio, Dodge Center, man. And he got off the, the bus. He said, I had $25 and an old get car. And he said, I stood on the curb. The bus was right there, so I just stepped off. I'd stand on the curb. And he said, I prayed, and God told me, he said, because of your obedience, ask what you will, and I'll give it to you. And this is what he said, I prayed. He said, God, if you give me 10 people that love you as much as I do, I'll win Akron to the Lord. Think about that. He had a mindset. Lord, and this is what I'm going to say. It don't take 10,000 people to save this whole area. It takes a handful of people that love God enough to keep us a spiritual mind. How many is ready for some breakthrough? If you're here today and you've been battling, you know it. I, I don't know. Everybody battles different. I know I have mine issues sometimes. But I'm telling you, God told me that if I would do it this way, that he would send. We already seen he sent. There's a, there's a new love of God hit this church. Yeah. Now we're going to see a new mindset. Come on. Come on. If you need this, I want you to stand. You say, Pastor, why am I asking you to stand? Because I'll, keep, I'll show you later on here, if God gives me time to go for the importance of doing your part. Now, those that you don't have a mind issue, I want you to help me pray because we're going to pray. This is, this is going to be a demonic war. If you think this is going to be snapped, you're saying, see, that's the trouble of the church. We want everything instant. All you got to do is name it and claim it. There's times you got to fight the battle Come and on. win the battle. Come on. We're about to fight a battle that the enemy don't want to give up. Because if he can mess up your mind, he can mess up you. He can have you shouting one minute and dreading it the next. Yeah, come on. He can have you walking on glory one minute and be in the depression the next minute. He, he, he's time that we put him in his place. Lord, I've obeyed you to this point to the best that I know how. And God, I heard your word say that if I would obey you, there would be a massive deliverance in the house of the Lord. God, every demonic presence that has operated in the mind has to leave right now. Not because of Bill Chapman, because of what thus saith the word of God. Every mind that has, has issues will be delivered and set free right now. This is not a gray area. This is not it might happen. This is let it be, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me a song. Give me a chorus. Let's worship. You got, I felt he breaks the, the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. 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 He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. 
he breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. Come on. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks a heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He Come on, church. Joy, joy. Come on, now, now, now. He breaks now, a now. heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy Come yoke. on, declare it. He breaks a heavy yoke. He brings joy. You sing it. He breaks a heavy yoke. Come on, sing it out. He breaks a heavy Freedom. yoke. Freedom. He breaks a heavy yoke. Freedom. He brings joy. Freedom. There you go. Freedom. He breaks, he breaks a heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks a heavy yoke. Out now in Jesus' name. He brings Joy, joy, come on, joy. sing it out loud. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks joy, joy. Declare it. He breaks. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He breaks a heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy. Okay, no music, no music. I want us to declare that over ourselves and over this church right now. We're going to sing it together because we're this close to freedom in our mind. You're this close to having breakthrough in your mind. As you begin to declare, he breaks the heavy yoke and brings joy, joy, joy. Freedom will enter into your mind. Come on, let's sing it together. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings freedom, freedom. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks the heavy yoke. Sing it out loud. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy. Come on, I want to hear you. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on, keep singing. Come on, keep singing. You're this close. You're this close. Bring out your praise. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on. Come on, mama. Come on, mama. You got this. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. Oh, he breaks the heavy yoke. Come on, sister Don. Come on, sister Don. Go ahead. Go ahead. He breaks joy, 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 joy. Oh, he breaks the heavy yoke. Come on, Regina. He breaks the yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks joy, 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 joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. Yeah! He breaks joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on. He breaks the heavy yoke. Come on, fight for it. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy. Come on, there's freedom. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks Come on. the heavy yoke. He brings joy, 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 Whoa, joy. He breaks the heavy yoke. One more time. He breaks the heavy yoke. He breaks the heavy yoke. He brings joy, joy, joy. Hallelujah. Give him a praise. Oh, there's freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom. The next one. Freedom. The next one I want to deal freedom. with is, is is very controversial in this area. But if God told me to deal with this issue, should we not deal with it? This is the next one. Some issues are attacks of demons. They're just attacked. And one of the reasons that so many Christians are being attacked 
by the devil or by demons is they're afraid to ask for help because of the church teaching. And, and so, and you say, but Pastor, I, I'm, I'm not feeling... I want you to get your mind off possession. I'm not talking about possession. I'm talking about demonic attacks. The modern technology, if you will, is demonized. The enemy hates your guts. And he will attack you every chance he gets. And sometimes we have issues that we can't get rid of, and it's nothing but attack of the enemy. And... and now, I can go a long ways, and I won't go there today because I don't think it's a, this is the right time, but demonic attacks can not only affect you personally, it can affect your family, and it can affect your possessions. You ever notice you can go 10 years and not have nothing go wrong, and it seems like everything turns around, something falls apart? Somebody said, well, it's just wearing out. I believe when you, God bless you something, you bless it back to God. And God looks after it for you. But sometimes we let issues come in, and then they fall out. We fall. It allows doorways to be attacked. And another reason that Christians can't do not know how to deal with demons is that we're not taught. See, we know that every Christian has a right to rebuke and chase demons off. But we don't know how. Because most times, if you, a lot of people thought, well, there is no demon. It's hard to chase something off. You don't believe them. Yeah. You know, they're going to laugh at you. And, and then some people do not know the authority of the Holy Spirit. And so then they try to use, well, I, they try to use the authority of the church or the authority of the pastor. It don't work. When you rebuke a demon, it has to be by the authority God given you. Do you understand that? He gives you the authority as he gives the church. And so I'm going to say this this morning. I'm, uh, if you've been under demonic attack, small or great, don't be ashamed to call and say, I need prayer from the church. Amen. Don't be ashamed. If anybody judges you, they're in trouble. Just because you're under demonic attack doesn't mean you're sinning. It just means it might be you're doing good. You just made the devil mad. But you have the authority in the name of Jesus. And so I want you to raise your hand right now. I'm going to do it. And, and when the Lord told me this, I don't know if I've ever done it. I'm going to do a, con a congregational rebuke of the enemy right now. Lord, when you showed me this the other day, I don't know in my life I've ever experienced this. But God, I told you I would obey you to the T. In the name of Jesus, every person that's been under attack right now, we come against them demons right now. In the name of Jesus. Every hand that's up, every heart that's here this morning, Lord, even those that are being attacked, little or long, right now, God, we rebuke these because we have the authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, name of Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you. Give the Lord a clap of worship. You say, Pastor, and the reason I've done that, and I believe God had me do it this way, is that's how easy it is. I, I want you to understand. I want to deal with one more, and then we're going to go into seeing God move mightily. But the next issue that God showed me, the, the last issue that he showed me was this. People are dealing with their past. You have trauma in your past. You have hurt in your past. You have things that you can't forgive yourself or whatever. If God can forgive you and forget it, why can't we? And you say, and, and here's the thing. Some things in your past takes a healing process. God begins the healing. It takes a healing process. You say, Pastor, I believe everything instant. I'm going to tell you, I've been hurt before, and I think I'm over it. A year later, I'm dealing with it again. A year later, I'm dealing with it again. 
you have to be healed of that. Amen? And I feel that in the church there have been some people that need healed. Sister Deb, it wasn't your fault that Ned passed. It was God loved Ned so much. Somebody, somebody here, you need to let go of some things right now. It's that you begin to let go, God does the rest. There's a healing in here. Oh, I feel it. Sometimes we have things that we're holding things. Sister Jan, I have to tell you this. Sometimes we let disappointment, maybe in a child or a loved one, cause us to harbor things. It's not that we don't love them. It's just that we wanted better for them and they didn't accept. And it hurts. Does it not hurt? Man, I know I can feel this. Come on now. I feel some breakthrough coming through right now. Yes. There's some disappointment. How many here has ever been disappointed? How many's ever been disappointed in God? You you believed and believed and you believed and it didn't happen the way you believed and you get so disappointed. And and, and you say, Well, Lord, what I do. God was just bringing something better. That's all. He wants to heal it right now. In the name of Jesus, that past has to go. The issues of the past can't affect the future. It's time we put them to an end right now. Let grief and mourning be healed. There's somebody got to touch Jesus right now. There's some people here you need a you need a healing so bad about your past. Reach out. Some of you got words in your heart that somebody spoke to you years ago, to- discouraged you told you you couldn't do this you couldn't do that you have people maybe it's a family member that's put you down your name is power. Your name and you tried to shake it your name let me tell you something in god's eyes you're every one of us is created equal and the same in the mighty hand of god there's no big eyes there's no little use it's all in god's hand right now Go ahead, give me that chorus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, come on. He's your moving. Name your name is power. Your name is healing. Come on. Your name is life. Healing, healing, healing. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Burn like a fire. 
Come on, come on. Oh, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Hallelujah. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Oh, your name is power your name is healing your name is life hallelujah break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire Praise the Lord. He's breaking it too. Yeah. And yeah. then as the Lord began to speak to me that day, this is one of the things he said. He said, many don't receive because they are not willing to go the extra little bit to, to, to see. And this is the scripture he led me to. In Mark, the second chapter, in the third verse, there were four men. They brought their friend to Jesus because they heard he was in this town. They heard he was a healer. And the, his, their friend was crippled in the uh, bed, palsy. And they carried him. When they got to where Jesus was, they couldn't get in. They were too many people. And here's what I'm going to say. We need to sometimes press a little bit farther. The woman that had issue of blood, she said, if I could just touch him. And she pressed through the crowd. They didn't open the door for her. The Bible says she pressed through. She, she pushed people out of the That's way right. and touched him. Yes. Well, these four men, they said, if we, we know that if we can just get him before Jesus, he'll be healed. Come on. And so they climbed up on the roof and tore the roof off. And here's what I'm going to say. God told me, he said, some of us need to tear some roofs off today. You've got a ceiling above your head that's stopping God from blessing you because it needs tore down. And here's something else I want to show you about this. Is when they tore the roof off, they didn't make their friend look different. Think about this. They let the man down in his bed. They didn't try to change him. They didn't try to make him something. They just tucked the bed up there. I'm sure they had like four ropes on this, and they just lowered him down right in front of Jesus. And you say, this is... What I'm trying to tell you, God wants to do something special for you. There's a divine miracle that's going to take place today. But there's some roofs that need to come down. Some of us, oh, it goes against you. I know it does. It goes against my nature, too. But some of us need to get out of the chair. You sat there 20 years and ain't been touched. I think you've been there long enough. Come on. You, you've praised God. You've raised your hands. You've sat in your chair, and nothing's happened. Don't you think it's time to take a roof off? You see, what you do is you say, I'm going to do something different, Lord. I'm going to do something different. comfortable. I don't like it. I would rather walk through the front door. But God, if it means taking the roof off, I want healed. <laughs> well, Brother Bill, I, I want it my way. That's your problem. God, don't move your way. He moves his way.
Now, I roll your toes in. I'm in the preacher right now. Some of you want it the way Grandma got it. You ain't your grandma. Amen. You are you. Oh, but, oh, I can't push nobody out of the way. I'm going to tell you something. You, the, you better not get between me and my blessing. I used to be a race fan years ago, and my race car guy was Dell Earnhardt. And he had a, they had a saying, the worst place to be is between him and the checkered flag. Because he was going to move you. Can I say this? Don't get between me and my blessing. I'm going to show you some scripture on this here in a little bit, how important it is to clear the way. I'm just not, I'm just not saying this to be saying it. I'm telling you that there's many times we don't receive because we're stuck in our routine and we won't get out of it. Sister Deb, sometimes it ain't easy, is it? She was raised different. I guarantee you the first time she walked in one of these churches, <laughs> she probably looked over at Cara and said, Yon, yon, buddy. <laughs> It wasn't easy. But you know what? Like the old song says, I went there to see what was going on, and something got a hold of me. There's something about to get a hold of the house of God worship center, and his name is the Holy Spirit, and God's about to move. Since I'm already in it this deep, let's really make the devil and them old cold Christians mad. You want something from God? Now, I know I'm going to catch it on this issue, all right. Raise your right hand and shake it. Well, God didn't tell me to do it. No, the man of God told you to do it. Some people won't want to obey the man of God. They say he's a nobody. Well, you don't ever receive either. Do you know when a man or woman of God gives you a word, you better hear it? You better hear it. There's somebody this close to receiving a miracle, and all you got to do is just obey God. Get out of your comfort zone right now. Forget about yesterday and what's about to happen. And don't think you know how God's about to do it. Let me tell you something. Do you know what God's about to do? He's about to flood you with the Holy Spirit so much, you don't care if you get your miracle or not. And down the road, you're going to say, I got my miracle, and it ain't going to mean nothing to you because you got so much of God in you. Come on now, church. Don't you tear the roof off, Pastor. Take too much to put it back on. If that's the problem, we got a money problem besides a God problem. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes we got to do things different. I'll share this, then we're going to pray. I just feel an anointing. One time when I was a bus driver for Sunday school years ago, a different church, I had a whole bus full of people, about 50 or 60. I had to go down this dead end road, and there was a woman that lived down there that would not let me turn. She had the only driveway, and she wouldn't let me turn in her driveway. Uh, she got mad at the church or something. She said, don't turn in my driveway no more. And so that meant I'd have to back about a mile up a hill and down, and I had a bus full of kids, about 50, 60 kids. You imagine backing like that. So she had a mailbox that sat next to this field. I said, who owns that field? She said, I don't know. I said, Okay. I backed over a mailbox and went back in the back in time. Everybody said, that was mean. No, I told her, I said, I'll be back to put it up for the mail rounds. You know what I did every Sunday for two months? I brought somebody with me. So after the first time, I made the hole real big. I'd send somebody out there, and he'd pull the mailbox up. I'd back up, turn around, go down, and he'd put it back. But every time I went back, I never said a hateful word to that woman. I prayed, you know what? God loves you, honey. After a while, she'd come up to me, and she said, you're the nicest person I ever met. You 
You can turn my driveway anytime you want. But I'm trying to say this. Sometimes you got to break the rule of man to please God because God has his own rule. up the roof, church. Hallelujah. Raise your hands right now towards heaven. Lord, we ask for the spiritual wrecking bar to come down. Anything that's hindering us, Lord, anything that's blocking the path, God, anything, Lord, that's stopping us to be before you and to touch you, God, right now let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. There it is. Go ahead. I'm a promise keeper, not in the darkness, my, my God, God. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, not in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, you Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That you are way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, 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 miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Come on. That is who you are. That is who you are. Come on, sing it out. That, that is, is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Waymaker. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. Come on. That is who you are. Sing it out loud. That is who you are. 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 Come on, sing it to him. That is who you are. Jesus, that's who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Jesus, and that is who you are. Lord Jesus. I want you to get ready now. We're going to see some healing take place. If you need a healing in your body, I want you to raise your hand over this building. God sees hands going up. All right. You may. I want you to just be seated a minute. I want to share just a few scriptures in this long line. 
the woman that had the issue of blood, after she touched the Lord, this is what Jesus looked at her and said. This is Mark 5, 34. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. No matter what, any, how anybody prays or what, you have to exercise your faith too. Now, I want to show you something. Jesus was on his way to, to, heal, to pray for a man's daughter, Jairus' daughter. And why, as soon as he said that to this woman, there were people come up. And this is John, Mark 5, 35. And they told Jairus, they told him, said, your daughter's already dead. The Bible says the Lord heard him say it. There's some of you here this morning that you have promises, you have needs that you feel is dead. Nothing can happen. They're dead. But I'm telling you, God's about to do a miracle. Can somebody say praise the Lord? So when the Lord heard that, that the girl was already dead, he looked over and he said, do not fear, only believe. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This man's daughter was at the point of death, and they just told her she had died, and the Lord says, don't fear, only believe. If he can expect that of this man, he's going to expect it of you. You see, special miracles sometimes come different. It takes some, and so you say, but Pastor, what I've asked God for, what I need God to do, maybe, maybe the doctors done said there is no hope. Maybe things have happened that. There is no hope. But Jesus is saying, be not afraid. I only believe. And then this is what he did. I'm, I told you I'm going to show you that sometimes we have to get things out of the life. In the 38th verse, Mark 5, 38, Jesus went to Jairus' house. And he said they were, man, they was weeping and crying, making a big scene. Causing a big turmoil. And the Lord says, Why are you making this big a deal for? Me? And they laughed him to scorn. Now, here's what I, I want you to listen close because if God ever gave me anything to preach or to say, I'm going to say it right now. There's times there's toxic people in your life that's costing you your miracle. Say that, Pastor. Say it. There's toxic. And so you know what Jesus done? He said, get out of here. Yeah, that's right. He said, I don't want this big turmoil. I don't want all this. Yeah, come on. You can't be, you see, you, you can't, somebody you're wanting God to heal you, and you got five people telling you it's impossible. That's turmoil. Pastor, I have to listen to my doctor. No, you don't. Come on. I remember the doctor told me one time, it was, it was really the nurse. She said, well, you got this. I said, no, I don't. She said, yes, you do. I said, ma'am, I'm telling you, I don't. And when the doctor come in the room, he seen I was angry. And he said, no, you, you don't have to do it that way. I said, I know I don't. I would have got up and walked out. And finally, the, the nurse come back, and, and we were talking, and she said, I didn't mean to upset you. I said, you didn't upset me. I said, but you don't understand. I'm a preacher. I believe in divine healing. Don't tell me I got something when I'm telling you I don't got it. Yeah, come on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, come on. And so sometimes we have too much negativity in our life for God to move. I'm going to have her to give her testimony again soon. But Sister Eunice, when she was giving her testimony, 
one of the reasons that it took her a long time is because she had to deal with some things. Am I telling it right? There were people, and I won't say who, but there were people in her life that didn't accept the healing. The Lord uh, put in my heart because they have, he has been telling me everywhere I go. Use your authority. Yes. You don't wait for the people to come and pray for you. You yourself has authority. The Holy Spirit is with you. Yes. Only you have to support it with the promises of God. Yes. That's all. Because if you don't uh, believe on the promises, nothing would happen. And the Lord gave to gave you your uh, authority already. Yes. He's saying you already. Yes. Yes. And don't wait for everyone to come and pray for Amen. you. You have everything in you Amen. that the Lord has done for you. Everyone that are saved, all those people that are saved. Yes. That's the faith. Yes. That's the faith. You could you could not say it better because we have the authority in us but notice what she said I only believe the word yes. in other words those things that are toxic amen amen he knows your faith amen amen and, and so Amen. Amen. Uh, only faith. That's right. The only way to. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The only way to please the Lord is by faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. That's right. Uh -huh. So, g getting, and this shows she, what she says is right what the scripture I'm about to give you. It says, Jesus put everybody out. Not he put out those that were crying, those that said, "Oh, she's dead," those that were saying there is no hope. He didn't want to hear it. But listen to what he done. I love this part. After he put everybody out, somebody say, "Tell it like it is, Pastor." He did not beg his heavenly Father to raise her from the dead. He did not even pray to the heavenly Father to raise her from the dead. You know what he said? He looked at that girl and he said, Arise thee. Yeah, come on. The authority of the word of God. Arise. Let me, let me just read it to you. I say unto thee, Arise. Yes, yes, yes. So if you need a miracle right now, if it's a healing, I want you to speak to your body. I say unto thee, be healed. I say unto thee, be healed. And I will believe it because the word of God says it. I want to hear it again. I say unto thee, be healed. This morning, I always get up early. For, I was up praying real early. and Then I, after I pray a while, I go sit in my recliner and I drink a coffee. I read some. Pray. I get up early and shower and go pray a while then I come and get my coffee and sit down and drink it. And I doze off. And I had a dream. And there's dreams and then there's dreams. There's dreams I know seen something. This one I knew. And so I don't know 
I don't even, I don't know, have I ever met you before? I don't think so. I don't think I ever have. But you've never, I don't think you've ever been here, right? Okay. This morning at 5 or 6 o'clock in that time, I dreamed that God showed me you, showed me right where you were sitting. So when you walked in and I seen you, I knew where you were going to sit. Now, this is what he showed me, and I don't know, he showed me blessing you, but I'm going to just tell you this. If this means anything or, or it's going to mean something. But when he showed me you, there was a man sitting next to you, dark hair. And this is the funny part, because I don't, I, in, my, in my natural, I would not allow this. But in my dream, I allow, I'm standing right here. And God shows me this man, and he runs up, falls at the altar, and he hugs my feet. See, God knows. So you're here by you're here by divine appointment. Yep, yep. There's somebody you're praying for or you need or whatever. <laughs> Her son. Is he dark headed? And let me ask you this. The man that I seen is dark headed, but he's not bald by any stretch, but he's got his his hair recedes. This is what I'm trying to tell you. God knows your prayers. Don't give up. Somebody praise the Lord with our sister. Somebody praise the law. Somebody praise the Lord in the house. I'm saying this, God hears your prayers. Who is? His name is Roger. Can I say this? When God puts something in motion, there's not enough devils to stop the hand of God. Somebody give God some praise. There's something breaking loose in the house of the Lord. Sister, Sister Pam, stand up just a second. 
I want to just say this to you. I feel this in my spirit. I I don't know what's going on. I don't have no idea what the doctors are telling you. I have no idea about nothing. But here's what I hear the Lord speak to my spirit. What I have begun to do, yea, can I not finish. Somebody give the Lord praise. You see, when God starts something, he's able to finish it. I, I want you to hear this. This is the Holy Spirit just focusing to me. I have not planned to say this. Normally, I will take a word from God, and I will pray about it, but I feel such an urgency. What the enemies meant for harm in Florida, God says, I'm sending them a, a revival that's going to shake the shade of Florida that all will see. <laughs> the very news people is going to be amazed at the people that's going to turn out for church and worship. Hallelujah. Because it's not going to be man or government getting praise. It's going to be God Almighty. Somebody give God some praise. Now, now I'm going to finish my dream. In this, in this dream, there was another person that come in to this. And I won't say who he is because he's not at this church. Right? He's not at this church. But it was a minister. And this is the second time in two weeks I've dreamed of this minister. And in the dream, I motioned for this minister. I said, come up and help me pray. And he sat there. And he wanted to, but he couldn't. And I motioned for him again. I said, come up. And he sat there. And he didn't. And all of a sudden, I'm out in the spirit. You ever have a dream where you fall out in the spirit? <laughs> it's awesome. I'm, I'm laid out here in the spirit. And I hear someone begin to speak in tongues. And it's this ministry. I said, God, is that you? Yeah, strange tongues of tongue. How many knows every tongue's not a gun? Every tongue's not God. If God has it, the devil indicates it. And I said, God, I said, I said, that Lord, is that of you? Is that your tongue? And the only thing the Lord said, just pray and believe. Pray and believe. So you don't have no idea who this person is. But we're going to pray and believe because there's somebody out there. Ministers go through things too. And that don't mean we push them aside and abandon them. It means we lift them up to the throne of God and say, God, move upon him. Would you raise your hands in agreement right now? Heavenly Father, I pray, God, Lord, that everywhere this person is today, that they feel the anointing power like they've never felt in their life. God, I, say, I pray, God, that they feel your arms just go around them. Lord, that they know, God, that you love them, Lord, and that you care for them. Father, we ask it right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Amen, amen. There's such a, heaven, a heavenly peace in the house of the Lord this morning. Anybody need special prayer? Sister Sister Lisa, let's have one more worship course or something. Can, I know I've wore these people out up here, but it, can I ask you this? Ain't it been an awesome spirit? <laughs> but it's just worship right now. I stand, I stand in all of you.
Come on, just worship the Lord, just for another moment. Come on.
prophesize perseverance, that you will persevere through this week, through these next few months. Lord, we persevere with the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You're walking in victory, victory, victory. Happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you, every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near, oh happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you, and the best year you've ever had. 